The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you by Rafter P Construction. Stick around to learn more about Rafter P's design build process and of course, the biggest deer in the world. So this week, Deer and Wildlife Stories comes to you from Kentucky. We're gonna start out at the annual Kentucky Alternative Livestock Association event, and then we'll be showing you some of the biggest bucks I've seen this year. The white-tailed deer is America's favorite big game animal. And white-tailed deer farming is the fastest growing segment in the agriculture industry. Our program's mission is to dive into the world of deer farming and inform you of how deer farmers all over the country are now using rapidly developing science-based research on their captive deer herds to solve the chronic wasting disease issue through selective breeding. Not only is this new science working, but it's obvious that captive deer breeding is the only way to help save America's deer herds from CWD, which will help improve overall herd health and at the same time can produce more quality trophy sized animals for the general public. Join me as we discover how whitetail genetics, deer auctions, animal husbandry, and so much more drive the modern day deer farming industry. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. So right now I'm in Covington, Kentucky, which is right below Cincinnati, Ohio. So we're on the border. And what's going on upstairs is the annual Kentucky Alternative Livestock Association event. Now this event is a gathering of deer farmers from all over the country. Kentucky Summer Showcase is our annual fundraising event. This is really important for all Kentucky deer farmers. It's our chance to raise funds that we need to help educate and improve Kentucky deer farming conditions. This fundraising event helps pay for our community outreach programs, our scholarship awards, as well as our lobbyist efforts. This is a must attend event. You'll see people from all over the country, just like Cameron Odom from Alabama. Uh, went to Nadifa this year for the first time and uh, met a lot of good people here from Kentucky. And uh, well, we want to spread the message about breeding durability. We breed markers and breed for lower GBVs typical frames and survivability, that's, cool. that's what we do. And of course there's lots of locals from Kentucky that are here and they're talking about how things are going in the state of Kentucky. When I compare Kentucky to other states, I'll be honest, we're very fortunate to be in the state we are that's agricultural driven. They really do see us as a small business and our owners are owned by us. So they are livestock here in the state, which is huge for us. Um, I personally work with our legislators. They're behind us 100%. So they're not putting more regulations on us. We're actually looking at repealing some that are currently in place. So this really is trending up for the deer industry in the state of Kentucky. I would like to see in the next five years more farms in Kentucky. There's a lot of untapped potential here in the state of Kentucky. It's grown and we are continuing to grow, but we've got a lot of room for more growth. Coming into Kayla, the, for me, is I'm new, right? So I'm, I'm learning the progress, the process, and really the up and coming things that's in deer farming with the CWD, the EHD, anything to help with the nutrition, help with the growth. You know, there's so many studies out there now and so many talented farmers that have already experienced everything. They work great with you and they give you all the knowledge they have. It's just a great group of people and the networking has been outstanding. I would recommend anybody that's looking at getting into uh, the deer farming business in the state of Kentucky to join our state organization, which, which is Kayla. We have this organization that's here to help you get started. We have new deer farming seminars. We have information packets that we hand out. So I would recommend anyone that's looking at getting into this business to become a member of our state association. So when we get back from the break, we're not only going to show you some of the biggest deer in Kentucky, but they're also some of the biggest deer in the world. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by MVP Whitetails, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and Rafter P Construction. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube and Facebook.
So I've known Henry Woodard for at least 20 years. And the entire time I've known him, I've known him to be passionate about one thing, the white-tailed deer. So this farm is located in Glasgow, Kentucky, and it's rolling hills, got a lot of trees. Uh, the pens are beautiful green. I mean, this place is just absolutely manicured. The good thing about deer farming in Kentucky is that uh, supply cannot meet demand, as simple as that. So for that reason, uh, deer farming is very profitable. The next thing is Kentucky, the, the land is perfect for deer farms. If you want to be in agriculture, deer farming is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to be involved in agriculture because you don't have to have a lot of expensive equipment. You don't have to have a big piece of property. The property here really isn't good for growing a lot of different crops because it's hilly and rocky and woody, but uh, it is perfect to have a deer farm. And every deer farmer I know here, they say business is over the top. So we're gonna start out with Dustin Blosser. Dustin is the farm manager here, and he may be young, but let me tell you something, he knows a whole lot because he has a wonderful mentor. His name is Henry Woodard. So Dustin, let me tell you, I've been traveling around the country for three weeks now, and every place I've gone, they say, wait till you get to Henry Woodard's. They say he's got the best yearlings there are. Now they've got th three pens of yearlings. Right? Yeah, we've got three pens, about 30 some yearlings each. Okay, so around 90 yearling bucks. Yes. Sir. So you're going to be, we're going to be showing you as many as we can, but I want you to take a look as a group, look at the size of these yearling bucks. And the first takeaway is I compare these to last year and they are light years ahead of where they were last year on the number one thing, looks. I think this is our best group so far. I mean, they are absolutely beautiful. Now that deer right there, you've got a standout right here. Who is that guy right there? That's Louisville Slugger. That's a one-year-old we have out of James Bond on Gladiator. Okay. What do you think that deer scores? He's high 200s. We had him down there a few weeks ago, and he just blew me away. I mean, that's, that's an unbelievable deer. Now, the deer that you've got all out here, I mean, they've got great pedigrees, and all of them are in the North American Deer Registry, but they're also scored to the genetic estimated breeding value, correct? Yes. So that buck there, he could be a GS or an SS. We're waiting back on results. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what he is. That is an incredible deer. So who's that deer right there? That's the two-year-old Brain Power. Uh, we have some film from him last year when you were out here. Oh yeah, I remember him. He was Brain Freeze one-year-old last year, but he's got a GS and we've bred with him last year. Nice, so the offspring out of him are gonna be better than he is. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so what we wind up doing is when you breed right, you heard him say hopefully when you breed right hopefully the offspring is better than the parents mm -hmm. okay and were they all born here everything was born here we haven't brought a deer into our herd in six years okay so explain to people how you're being able to create these genetics with them all being born here so we do outcross occasionally uh, these are all out of a james bond buck which goes back to that missed ticket orange 57. Uh, that one there is out of him that one over there is also out of him uh, just stacking genetics and Henry's taught me a lot about line breeding and the outcrossing and you can see it when you go out to the pens. The one thing that uh, you're going to find when you start uh, studying the GEBVs is that they say that line breeding, which is what we've done for years and years and years, is something you don't want to do down the road. And I think it's amazing because think about that, how much we're learning about mm -hmm. this business. I mean, what we're doing now, we're looking for outcrosses, the perfect outcross. And I think if we can find, because we've got all these tight bred animals, we go to the perfect outcross and that's when we're gonna see better genetic estimated breeding values and we we'll see better, more hardy, durable deer. All right, so this is one pen of yearlings. Let's go take a look at another pen. Sounds good, I mean, we got a pretty good one over here. <laughs> deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Big Time Whitetails and Exotics, L.E. Fence, the Texas Deer Association, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and New Dart. Deer Wildlife Stories will be right back. Closed captioning is brought to you by Advanced Deer Genetics. All right, so you're looking at another pen of yearling bucks right here. 
and are all these yearlings. We have a few two-year-olds in here. Uh, I think there's just three or four. Uh, I guess the two-year-olds are the white well, tags. Yeah, the white tags. Everything right. with a pink tag is one-year-old. Okay. I want to know who that buck is right there. That is a daddy-o. That's, we're pretty excited about that one. That's Kentucky Thunder. Okay, and he's a yearling. That's a one-year-old out of front runner on a Mr. Incredible Doe. Okay. He was born here? Yep. Okay, and his mom was here? Yep. Okay, his so. Grandma was here all the way back. So, I mean, Henry's been focusing on genetics for as long as I've known him. I've known Henry a long, long time. Okay, and anybody in the industry knows that Henry Woodard, uh, his deer are in just about everybody's big pedigrees. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really are. So, he's got a great pedigree, okay? But what about the GEBV? We're not too sure he could have an S. Uh, we're waiting on results to come back in. Okay, if you want to know how GEBVs are obtained, okay, what we wind up doing, when fawns are born, a tissue sample is taken out of the ear. It's a tissue sample unit. They'll wind up taking the, a hole punch out of its ear, and then they wind up, that goes in a, a little tube, and you send that off a, to the North American Deer Registry. And what they'll wind up doing, extract the DNA from that, and they will tell you what the genetic estimated breeding value is. Of course, they're gonna tell you the parentage as well, but the, what we're looking at now is that GEBV score. Okay, what codon it is, mm -hmm. as well as what the breeding value is. And so when you buy a deer from Woodard Whitetails for breeding purposes, okay, they're gonna be able to provide that for you. And I would encourage you, don't buy a deer from anybody unless you know the GEBV. And I know that probably gonna upset some people in the deer breeding business, like, oh, no, no, don't say that. It's just as important as the pedigree. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you could have the greatest pedigree in the world without a nice GEBV, and it wouldn't be worth having. So. Uh, the jury's still out on him, but he's about as pretty of a yearling, and I'll bet you money that deer, if he's not the biggest yearling at Nadifa, he's gonna be the second beast. Uh, we're looking to take home first. I mean, I'm telling you right now, that is a beast of a deer. So let's go take a look at some other one-year-olds. All right, sounds good. All right, so more yearlings here. And before we start showing you these guys, I know y'all are gonna want a telephone number to contact Henry Woodard or Dustin Bloster. So give them a phone number to call if they want more information on what you've got out here. So my cell phone number is 304-698-5798. And of course, we've got the website up on the screen right now and you can check them out online, but these are all yearlings in here as well. And so, like you said, the three pins of yearlings, about 90 of them. And y'all have the most impressive pins of yearlings I've seen, and I've traveled all over the country. So that guy right there is a standout, big time. Yeah, we love his tall tines. He's out of that James Bond buck again, which really? goes back to that missed ticket. She's produced sons, grandsons, great-grandsons, all the does produced out of that line. It really goes back, and we've breed with it heavy. The white tag right there, he is a two-year-old buck for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, but who is he? He is a walking tall two-year-old that we're going to cover some does with. He is actually an SS marker. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's valuable. I mean, walking tall was a heck of a sire, and anybody in the industry knows who walking tall was. And, and you look at him on the NADAR registry, and you see lots of offspring out of him. But uh, that deer right there with an SS marker is valuable. That's what you're looking for as a breeder right there. That is a nice deer, and he's only two? Mm-hmm, okay. that's the big, tall, framey look we're going for. Well, walking tall was tall and framey mm -hmm. too, so that is, he's like his daddy. Look at that now. Y'all sell uh, deer, obviously, as breeders, mm -hmm. okay? And somebody may be wondering uh, who the typical customer is for Woodard Whitetails. Describe your typical customer. So we have a lot of new farmers getting into it. They'll need some does and some breeder bucks. We've sold quite a few the last few years. Um, we also have some farmers that have been in for a while that are needing either some new genetics or a buck to cover their does. We sell to just about anybody. Uh, there's a lot of ranches that need stalker bucks. We'll sell them stalkers and we, we have some stalkers of our own for our ranch. Yeah, and so the stalker bucks are clearly to get these genetics out on the property so those genetics spread out throughout the herd and improve the quality of the deer on the place. But this is pretty amazing. Now, we've shown you the one-year-olds and you got it, they're just jaw dropping. I mean, but now it's time to take a look at the two-year-olds. So when we get back from the break, Dustin and I are gonna head to the two-year-old pen and we're gonna show you some monster two-year-olds. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, and the North American Deer Farmers Association. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube and Facebook. Now for some great information on fencing from our friends at LE Fence. 
All right, hey guys, this is Ron with Ellie Fence. Back here, we're getting ready to stretch some net wire so we can get it put up before uh, call it quits for the evening. So right here, we've laid out the net wire on the ground, uh, attach it to our stretcher bar, and then we stood up some of our fence down the line so that when we pull it, it's already kind of standing upright with some T-posts. We flip them upside down, bend the phalanges down, and you can almost create a TP to keep it standing in the air. So now when we hook it up to our tractor and start pulling back, we start going until we get some good resistance on this net wire. Don't want to be too tight as we're working in some deer pins. You don't want a deer or a good buck running into it, breaking the neck or getting his uh, antler stuck in the fence. So we keep a little bit of play in it, not much, just a little bit. And then after we get some good tension on it, we're gonna go ahead and start doing what we did over here on the gates and we're gonna cut one strand at a time and we're gonna cut off the stays and then tie the wire back around the pipe. And then we'll be done with this portion of the fence. All we got left to do are some gates. So we're gonna turn this one big deer pin into two little deer pins and good to go. Thanks guys. Okay, we have shown you lots of beautiful one-year-olds, but now we're really gonna focus on, on two-year-olds for a minute. So, who's that? So that's a buck, W34B, that we're gonna be covering some does with. We're waiting on results on him too. He could be an SS. Um, we really like his look, and we'll throw him off some does. Yeah, he's, he's, man, what a beautiful buck right there. And he's two, mm -hmm. born here. Yep. Okay, so as we're showing you these bite tag bucks, these two-year-olds, Okay, we want you to know that the moms of all these deer are residing right over there, okay? And so what happens is a lot of breeders come out here, I love that buck, you got his mom? Yep. Yeah. Okay. We got and, his sister. And, yep, and got a sister. So if you want those genetics of that, the way you're gonna get it, you can buy him, of course, or buy semen out of him, but the real way to buy him is through the mom or the sister. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And you all sell them all the time. So who's that white tag buck right there? So that's a buck we're gonna sell him as a stalker to somebody. We got a few stalkers in here. Um, we got a few sold as breeders for people. Mm -hmm. And some people like them big and gnarly, some people like big and typical. So we, we try to focus on having a variety of looks. It just depends on what you're after. Well, when you got 90 yearlings, I mean, clearly we showed you a lot of different yearlings and some of them are wide, some are tall. I mean, they're all big. Okay, but that's the cool thing about deer. No two deer are alike. Mm -mm. I mean, when you start taking a look at these, look at that white tag, Look at that white tag. Look at that white tag. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're all different. And so, and they've all got different genetics and all got different GEBVs. That guy right there is a smoker. Look at him, who's that? So that's just one of the two-year-olds we're gonna sell as a stalker this year. Really? Mm-hmm. Good gosh. Well, I guess, are you helping make decisions on these guys now? I've learned a lot in the last year or two, and he's asked me on some pedigrees, but ultimately I'm asking him. Yeah, Henry is like, the master. He, he knows all these pedigrees going back for 20 plus years. I don't know how many thousands of deer Henry has produced building these pedigrees. And so the deer all out here have got great pedigrees. Oh my gosh. All right, now it's time to talk to the man himself, Henry Woodard, and see what he has to say about this. How long have you been breeding deer now? You know, Keith, it's been been around 20 years. Really? Yes, sir. Well, what caused you to get into it? Well, it's an interesting story. I bought a ranch in Pearsall, and uh, I wanted to improve my genetics. So I started doing a little research, and I figured out that you could actually buy genetics from breeders. So I got to studying more about the breeding, and I thought, well, dang, you know, this is interesting. I think this is something that I really want to do. And then started you know going around touring farms all over the state of texas and finally settled in uh with genetics that i wanted and you know it's uh heck it started from there and look what it's built into the big thing that i noticed this time is that the deer are prettier than they've ever been clearly deliberately bred that way right a absolutely we've really been focused on the look that everybody's looking for we we want to uh produce more big typical uh mainframes longer tines and we want to stick with the width that we got because we feel like we've got exceptional width. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, it's just focusing on, you know, the things that we need to do to, to constantly, continuously improve our herd. We're breeding with the best animals uh, with the SS markers and GEBV scores. And we just partnered with uh, uh, Jesse Boger 
uh, Jay Smith and some of the guys in Texas on a buck called Total Package. We're excited about him. That's a very good name for him because he is the total package. He's got the breeding value. He's got the look. He's got everything that you could ask for in a buck. And we think he can bring a lot of things to the table that we need here. You've been doing a long time. What's your goal? You know, my goal, I think at this point in my life, is to start working with Dustin a lot and teaching him a lot of things that I've learned the hard way. I've been blessed and I'd like to give back. And so, you know, I'm really enjoying this uh, point in time in my life and being able to do that and, and just helping other farmers and helping, you know, uh, to make uh, impact on the industry and hopefully leave things here in the state of Kentucky in a better shape than when I got on the board here. And so, you know, those are the goals that's important to me. Well, I know when you first started, your goal was to grow big deer. <laughs> you accomplished that 15 years ago. I mean, he's got the big deer. But now all of a sudden he's at the point in his life, and I think that's very commendable, is to give back, okay, and to help people. So, you know, if y'all are interested in coming on out here, I mean, they're just outside of Glasgow, Kentucky, okay? Call Dustin, he would love to talk to you. He's out here every single day. The best time to come right now is the middle of August, okay? Uh, the deer are just about getting done. They probably got another week, 10 days of growing, but uh, come out here and take a look at it. Schedule your appointment, and I promise you'll be happy you did. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, so you've got property and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction. Rafter P Construction is the leading design build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch design build projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands on, incorporating your input into every aspect of your project with their in house design teams. The goal of Rafter P Construction is to be your builder for life. Rafter P Construction, they'll be with you every step of the way to build your dream project. All the while, keeping quality and customer satisfaction at the forefront.